because the spurious charges from Central Park will not, or from Central Square, will not be included. That's my assumption. That's the only thing I can think of that could happen to make the hearing shorter because I have accepted the pleading. Um, the other possibility is maybe my attorney thinks I'm going to accept a plea deal for some reason, but he hasn't asked me. Well, the last time he asked me about a plea deal, I said no, so um, it would have to be significantly better than that, which was time served to continue probation. And my objection was to continuing probation. Um, What's happening right now? Uh, well, other cases are being heard in court, but we're heading back to the KAC because uh, my hearing has been postponed to 1.30. And uh, there are going to there are many other people on the document docket for well three other people on the docket for 1:30. So that implies that this is going to be a half hour hearing, um, which would mean that they've either either asked for a continuance uh, or they've uh, chosen to drop the. Uh, Central Square and the Central Square complaints, which are uh, maybe riot, maybe uh, um, disorderly conduct. You'd think you'd be able to tell the difference between rioters and people who are just being disorganized. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, it just goes to show how arbitrary their charges are. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really does. I mean, they couldn't even say with any certainty which statute I violated, and those statutes are those statutes rather are Byzantine. You know, one of them has like nine things that you could have done. This is a disorderly conduct statute, and they include blocking traffic and. Uh, and uh, disobeying a police officer, which are very different acts, which are very different things that you have to prove. And to say that you've done something under that statute without telling you exactly what conduct uh, was prohibited uh, that you actually performed is, you know, there, I didn't see any cops there, but maybe they're saying I disobeyed a police officer. I don't recall blocking traffic, but maybe that's it. Um, and then some of the uh, some of the uh, provisions of the uh, disorderly conduct statute are so vague that you can't really interpret what they mean without you know reading a whole bunch of court decisions, which will probably turn up that they mean whatever the police want them to mean. Do you have a message for anyone who's been following along with uh, all the things that have been happening to you in Keene, Rich? Um, yeah, actually, we've, uh, you know, there's been a recent spate, there's been a few people who've been violent with uh, various activists around here. Uh, you know, nothing serious has happened to a free stater yet, and I'm pleased to say that, but they keep, uh, they keep nailing the, the activists they're not after, and that's unfortunate. But, uh, you know, the, uh, I'd like to let you all know, 90% of the feedback I get from people who actually live in Keene is good. The local ba uh, gas station uh, clerk, uh, the local gas station, there's three clerks that like me just fine, and there's one that clearly hates me, and since I've never met her, I assume she doesn't like free Keene. That's not bad, 75%. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of good work in Keene. And uh, I advise you to come on down and check it out for yourself and have a good time down here. We need more activists. Are you concerned about what's going to happen today? Um, well, I mean, I'm concerned. I'd like not to have my life disrupted again. But, you know, because it's this whole thing of going to jail all the time, it's very expensive both personally and economically. How much time have you spent in jail for your activism? Let's see. Um, I did 40 days, then I did 12 days, 
Um, actually, the first one I was sentenced to 60, but did 40. Um, so I'm going to give this in sentencing terms. So um, that would make it a 90 day, a 12 day, um, once for a year. Um, and then I've just come back from doing 36 days held without bail pre-trial. And they held me without bail until the, the judge said the uh, said to the uh, uh, my attorney and the prosecuting attorney um, that there was much left less on the tape than he expected to see, and so he lowered my bond to five hundred dollars. And of course, my friends immediately came and got. Um, How much time would you be willing to spend in jail for this issue? Um. Well, I mean, I've, I've dedicated my, my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor to this fight. And when I'm in jail, I pretty much make anarchists. So it's, it's not that bad. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I don't know. If I got an offer that included some more jail time and end probation, then I'd do it. Um, you know, but that's that's not really I mean what are you saying how much time would I do in jail in, in order to legalize marijuana yeah or in order to return to cons constitutional government uh, I mean if I could go to prison for the rest of my life and it meant that nobody else ever had to go again for the issue of marijuana I'd take that deal you know I probably wouldn't live very long because I'd probably uh, you know go on a hunger, hunger strike as, as soon as I got in, but, uh, you know, it, what's one man's life compared to the millions of people who are harmed by the war on drugs every year, you know? I watched, I watched my girl die, partially because she didn't have medical marijuana. What's partially. it like in jail? Um, pretty boring. They're, they seem to be intrigued by me because I'm this weird character who kind of chooses to go to jail all the time and, you know, they think that's strange because most of them are, are just there because they, you know, they got caught. Um, and, uh, you know, couldn't, couldn't get out of it. So I'm, I'm considered kind of a weird character in there. Tell me more about how you make anarchists in jail. Um, basically... You know, you always want to find common ground with people. So generally, the first, the first thing I try to determine is whether whatever they're in there for would have been a crime uh, under anarchism. Because, you know, the, uh, there are some things that would be in some robbery. If you're in there for robbery, rape, and murder, you're probably not the person that I want to spend my time trying to recruit. If you're in there for selling weed, if you're in there for prostitution, though, you know, you don't get a lot of that on the male side, um, then, you know, you can reach out to somebody first through what they got arrested for, and that's usually common ground. Then I start feeling them out on other issues, and I look for what makes them not an anarchist now, and some of them are already anarchists, but they don't know it, you know? But I start looking for, this, for the sticking points, and I try and determine whether it's intellectual or emotional. If the sticking point is intellectual, I can argue with them. If the sticking point is emotional, then I can present the tragic, tragic outcomes that come from state intervention and point out how things would be better under anarchism. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a big part of carrying the messages. You have to come to people where where they are, you know? If you go up to somebody who's a stone-cold statist and tell him, oh, well, you violate the nap, you know? He's gonna say, I don't care about the nap, you know? It, only we care about the nap. Thank so, you, Rich. Okay. <laughs>